Hello, my name is Ryan Bounds and I am a research and development scientist with Syngenta in California. And today, uh, for this symposium, uh, sponsored by the Graduate Student Committee and the Industry Committee, I would like to give you my perspective on, uh, on being a field scientist in industry and describe this over uh, the course of a year. Industry field scientists are an integral part of research and development efforts to deliver new technologies to agricultural producers. The activities of field scientists from project planning to experiments to results will be described from the perspective of an agrochemical industry field scientist. First, I'd like to start out with something that's obviously near and dear to my heart, the top five things I love about my job. Number one, it is science and it's outdoors. I love being outside and I love uh, studying and understanding things uh, in the scientific world. Number two, and this is very important to me as well, a diversity of projects. Um, I get to work in a wide variety of crops across a a great diversity of, uh, of pests and get to work with a lot of great people. So I tell people I never do the same thing two days in a row. Third, um, my output in my position is data and information. Uh, there's typically not a dollar sign associated with these. Data in the form of ratings, uh, numbers, disease severity, insect counts, percent control, and the information piece is very critical too because those are actually the recommendations that come out of uh, the data that are generated. Number four, collaboration uh, is essential in this job and to achieve a desired goal uh, in my case of bringing a product to market uh, where it fits and being able to collaborate with uh, private researchers and public researchers is just a, a huge part of the job. And fifth, this is really my contribution to the future of pest management. As I look at a career in agriculture, I couldn't imagine myself doing uh, really anything else. Um, field scientist position is an excellent job. So here's a map of California and I have shaded in purple uh, the territory that I cover, cover which is uh, the southern and central part of the San Joaquin Valley as well as the coast, uh, Salinas Valley. And I have a, a very big crop diversity from trees, nuts, and vines, the perennial crops, to warm season vegetables such as tomatoes and melons, uh, a lot of cool season veggies, especially along the coast over in Monterey and San Luis Obispo counties. Also do a little bit in the row crops uh, such as corn and cotton. In terms of the research spectrum, um, I'm a plant pathologist by training. I do a lot of uh, plant pathology trials, but I've also picked up other skills uh, to be capable to, to, to study insects, weeds, um, post-harvest pathology, uh, specifically in fruit crops is another area that I'm very interested in and, and do trials in. Uh, seed treatments are also another trial a type of trial that that I do. Um, also involved in a few of the trait trials and occasionally some good laboratory practice residue studies. So what's a year look like for Ryan Bounds? Um, really the planning phase of the year is pretty long. It extends from August until about January and this is where we're generating protocols and plans for the upcoming field season. And the one interesting thing about this planning phase is that there's always new products coming in the pipeline and it's never the same thing two years in a row. So some years we may have an abundance of, of uh, potential fungicides uh, in the screening process. Another year we may have um, a group of insecticides to screen. So it's really dynamic and it's always changing. Uh, during this planning phase, we're also thinking about where we're going to place the trials um, on a, a U.S. level and also the timing of these trials is very critical as well. In the second phase, this is the field season, you could see that takes up most of the year from February 
uh, to November in my case in Central California, and that's really where the 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 work comes in and the the sweat <laughs> is uh, is plentiful, especially in the summer months in California. So in this time of the year, really focused on site selection and establishing uh, you know good research sites. Uh, there's also the opportunity to do quite a bit of plot tours where folks come out and see the performance of particular things that we're testing. And then lastly, the major part of the year is the results portion, and that spans from September until about January. And that's really where the, the key decisions are made. That's when we have a, a chance as field scientists to look at a lot of the data from not only our own territory but across the U.S. and, and other parts of the world as well uh, to really draw conclusions and to boil everything down into okay do we have a product, um, how are we going to uh, label this product and what are we going to do with it. So it's it's pretty exciting. It's, it's in the flow of the research and development process. So the year starts out in early February with almond trees blooming, and uh, it's, it's a real blessing to be able to work in such a pretty crop. Um, during this time period, we do uh, blossom blight studies with monolinea laxa, monolinea fructicola, and this is a small uh, blossom assay that was done. And as you could see, uh, some of the blossoms are, are quite infected with this, but uh, these are fun to work with. Very meticulous trials. They take a lot of time, but uh, very meaningful results come out of this. Most of the applications are, there's a variety of ways to apply, but this is one application technique using a PTO uh, driven air blast sprayer um, applying to small trees. And you will note toward the top of the picture, uh, there's actually a PVC pipe that goes up through the middle of the tree, and that's where we run additional uh, overhead irrigation, which is not commercial practice, but helps promote disease development uh, due to the additional moisture. So it is kind of fun to, um, to play with the environment a little bit to promote disease development. Um, there have been, uh, this is a picture out on the west side of the valley. These are melons and a very large seed treatment trial each replication, each experimental unit in these trials were um, just over one and a half acres um, long, so in size, and that was that was a fun trial to do. Such a pretty place to work, and and also on a much larger scale than most of the research plots are. Uh, we also do a lot of small plot studies. Uh, this is in an almond orchard where we had a li very limited amount of product, experimental product to work with and actually did uh, small branch trials where we flagged um, six branches per treatment on different trees and used a household spray bottle to apply the, the fungicides and this is for control of alternary leaf blight in almonds. Uh, very good data out of this trial, but on definitely a very, very small scale. So data collection is really the utmost important thing in, in this role, uh, both the accuracy and thoroughness of it. Um, but there's a lot of time spent counting plants, counting insects, counting lesions, uh, weighing, taking yield. Um, a lot of observation is really key in this role. Um, both from, from the perspective of your target pest, but also any adverse crop response that, that any of the products may cause. So uh, data collection is, is very important and very routine in this role. And really observation is key. So you can see the leaf on the left uh, has some insect feeding from cabbage looper, as does the one on the right. But the one on the right, you could see there's a tan hue to the leaves and that's actually phytotoxicity and so the adjuvant that we used on the right hand side actually discolored the leaves and uh, being able to be out there in the fields and discern these differences and notice these things is, is critical before these products get to market. 
also do seed treatment studies and this is kind of phase one uh, in the greenhouse we're looking for germination any differences in terms of the rate of uh, emergence also any differences in plant size and phase two in the field uh, this was an inoculated trial with tomatoes with Rhizoctonia solani and you could see there's uh, a row on the left that has uh, much fewer plants than some of the rows uh, to the right of that. Uh, this is really where the rubber meets the road as far as how well does a seed treatment protect against certain soil borne fungi. A uh, great powdery mildew study, you could see the untreated control on your left and one of the more effective treatments on the right. And you need to hire an enthusiastic technician. <laughs> It's fun to be out in the field. It could be, it could be a great job. And when you have the right people around you to, to work with you on your research projects, it just makes it all the more enjoyable. Uh, this is a post-harvest study with Penicillium digitatum on oranges, and these are inoculated studies. You could see in the middle. The two fruit on the right, in the middle of the black circle, there's a puncture wound. So there's a wound there, and the inoculum is applied directly to that wound. Um, these are really fun studies. And here's another study. This was actually done on peaches and nectarines. Nectarines on top, peaches on the bottom. And this was a brown rot study, monolinea fructicola. Uh, I did a trial a couple, couple of years ago on the west side of the valley where I was targeting insects and it just so turns out that the variety I planted and the time that I planted, um, we had the right environmental conditions for an epidemic of powdery mildew on tomato and was able to generate some trial data using new fungicides uh, for this purpose. So that was really unexpected in this case, but um, certainly welcomed it. And this, in the very same field, on the same day, uh, we had uh, tomato fruit worm in there too. So it was kind of a two for one type situation where you got to learn a lot off uh, one particular uh, set of research plots in an area. Uh, the plot tours, as I mentioned earlier, these are uh, very valuable to bring out uh, colleagues and customers uh, to be able to show them, you know, what we're working on. Uh, much, m many of the products that I work on are still in the pipeline. They're still coded products. And eventually, if, if they make it to market, uh, they will have regular product names. But plot tours are a good opportunity to uh, showcase these before they make it into the marketplace and into a commercial uh, situation. Uh, obviously, I do a lot of applications of different things like fungicides, insecticides, and herbicides. This is a herbicide trial in pistachios, and my point here is just uh, calibrating. Obviously, a lot of these things are applied with small equipment. In this case, it's a hand boom, and so proper calibration is, is very critical there. And to be able to know how to calibrate different pieces of equipment is, is necessary. Uh, I've had the opportunity over the past several years to learn new disciplines. Coddling moth on apple is not something uh, in graduate school as, as a plant pathology student that I had really ever considered working in. But now I'm doing coddling moth trials on apples and uh, they're actually really fun. So what are the challenges in field scientist positions? Well, first of all, I guess it's kind of having a balancing act, um, a time management with the different trials, the different field studies, uh, knowing when to do them, and then also balancing that time with, with meetings and things like that. Um, having a lot of trials in a big territory, um, obviously want to optimize the efficiency of, of, the, of the whole program, uh, not only the trials, but also the paperwork that come with them. In my program, I've really strived to complete high quality trials. So I would much rather have four, you know, top grade A quality trials rather than uh, eight kind of mid grade trials. And that's something that um, is very important to me personally. 
you know, it's always a challenge with trials that don't work. Um, you don't get the pests that you were expecting or you don't get any pests. And there's also those situations where a, a grower may overspray uh, your trial and kind of ruin your chances of, of obtaining your target. So those, those kind of things happen, but um, we push on. There's a lot of windshield time. Uh, obviously traveling throughout the territory, um, see we've got corn on the right and walnuts on the left. Again, a lot of opportunities um, in this position. There's some interesting uh, small type equipment we get to work with, and I do uh, tow a tractor around at times with a sprayer. Um, so that's, that's kind of fun. Some people don't like towing equipment, but I don't actually mind it that much. This is one of the high points of the meeting, um, or excuse me, of, of the year, and that's preparing for the results meeting. I mentioned earlier that the, the outcome of a year of research is really data and information. So there's a lot of graphing, a lot of critical thinking, summarization that goes on, and this is really a high point. The, the presentation of the results is the, the culmination of a lot of hard work throughout the year. Uh, this would be an example uh, data graph of what would be prepared for a meeting, showing different experimental fungicides, how they compare with the standard, uh, and this graph actually showing uh, disease incidence over time in almonds for alternary leaf blight. So I'll wrap up here by just showing this again, the top five things I love about my job, and I hope that uh, today you've been able to get a good taste of, of what my position is and obviously why I enjoy it. So thank you very much for your attention today.